Right, let's get started. Now, the Ghana Health Service has emphasized the need for everyone to wear face masks to prevent a spike in COVID-19 cases. Now, some European countries recently recorded a spike in COVID-19 cases as a result of non-compliance to the COVID-19 safety protocols. Now, in Ghana today, research has shown that observation of these protocols have reduced drastically. Uh, what is accounting for this latest attitude exhibited by the general public? Is it the case that the decline uh, of inactive cases uh, recorded by the Ghana Health Service has given the impression that the disease has been defeated? We'll be interrogating that in a bit. But yesterday at a news conference, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abwaje, expressed concern that the refusal of some members of the public to adhere to the safety protocols will lead to a spike in cases under management. Let, let's hear him. One of the most sensitive ones is the use of the mask. If you realize the last three or so weeks we have been conducting the mask wearing. In the first one that was published, we had about intention to use of about 80% plus, about 44% were using the mask appropriately. In the next slide, in the next survey that was done, this number dropped to 15%. And that means that people are dropping their guard and all that we've done what we are sh sh having now is because of the things we've done. So if people stop dropping their guns to stop using the masks, and about 54% of people are not wearing masks, that is a major, major worry. The following week, which is the very latest one, it dropped to 14.4% in Greater Accra. This is the exit center. Greater Accra is the one that is driving the pandemic. And so it's extremely important that we reset and go back and start wearing the mask so that whatever we have as the active cases are coming down, as the positive are coming down, it will continue to go down. We started with one case and we got to 42,000. And so where we are now, we are not, we have what we have, what's uh, an easy uh, calm. We need to be very, very careful. And so that is our major worry that we need to intensify the campaign. Now, Dr. Abwaji also gave the cumulative case count as 43,949, with 1,287 of them being active cases. Continues to improve despite the dangers that we are facing uh, in terms of dropping our guard. We are having, recording now, 1,287 uh, active cases with a cumulative total of our 43,949 cases, 42,000 of that has recovered, leaving an active case of uh, 1,287. We've recorded so far 270 deaths, um, accounting for about 0.6% of the total of the, I mean, at the risk. Next slide. We have so far tested about 431,272 people and 43,000 is positive, and that brings that our positivity rate about 10%. Uh, and this majority have been the contact tracing, and we also have about a third of them coming out of the routine cases. That is for those who show symptoms and are tested. As you can see, um, the numbers um, we have uh, probably a one and a half waves. You see, if you see, we, in June, we had a very huge spike, but we stand and we continue to go down. And uh, so we are very happy that if this continues and uh, we'll be probably out of the woods, but we have to do that by ensuring that we do what we have been doing, testing, isolating, and also applying the protocols that are needed. Next slide. So if you look at the moving average, it's to continue to go down. And so we still on the down, downward trend but we need to continue and improve what we are doing to, to continue with that. Next slide. Yes, so at the time of reporting, we have reported, recorded about 108 new cases from 22 uh, districts, it's not 216, 260, and uh, from six out of the 16 regions were reported, which means that 10 regions did not report any case. 
Right, we're now joined by Dr. Bernard Hammond, uh, President of the Ghana Association of Doctors in Residency. Dr. Hammond, thank you for your time. Now, one of the big concerns uh, in many countries that are managing COVID-19 is with community spread. This is uh, uh, one of the things that the Ghana Health Service is concerned might be on the research if we don't observe the protocols. Talk to me, uh, according to your members, are we seeing... Uh, a, a, a surge in community spread in recent times? Okay, thank you, Kujo, and good afternoon to all viewers. Um, as such, it will be difficult for me to categorically say we are seeing an increase in the surge because of the test. Um, are we still testing? We've had challenges. Now, even if you go to the Ghana Health Service website, to the COVID tracker, the last situation update was on the 24th. So between 24th to date, we don't know what is happening. I don't know when the last sample was taken. The re record of, I had the, um, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service mentioning that we have recorded 108 new cases at um, over the past, I think that's the most recent um, count. It seems to be, um, decreasing, but you forget that we are now using clinical indicators, not just the laboratory test results. For instance, if someone comes in, the person complains symptomatic of COVID, you may be asked to, okay, go home, self-isolate for 14 days. If your symptoms disappear, then you resume your normal activities. So that's a clinical definition. Are these cases also being counted as part of the 108, are they still being recognized as part of the 108? So it would be difficult for me to objectively say there is a, either an increase or a decrease in the numbers because the parameters that were being used when the pandemic started as to strict definition to the laboratory, the laboratory pickup of cases, we were able to easily count and identify the number of cases. Is it the same? as what is pertaining now. If there's the goalpost has changed, it would be difficult for me to say that there's been an increase or a decrease in the numbers. Now, at a point, the uh, case definitions were adjusted uh, in conformity with the WHO. Yes. Um, so essentially, yes. now we know that if you're symptomatic, um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you will, you will uh, if you're symptomatic, then um, yes. you will be declared to have uh, recovered uh, 14 days after, after your first symptoms. Yeah. Yes. So, so yes. Uh, tell me, how, how has this affected the way in which we are measuring our progress? Um, has it has it been a dramatic change, or was that the right thing to do? Are we still have we still got our eye on the ball in terms of what's the reality on the ground? You know, when you take a look at the yeah, economic indicators, it's not just about health. For instance, a vast majority, over 90 percent of uh, cases that are positive are virtually asymptomatic and they are, even there are some who have some mild symptoms these persons wouldn't be admitted to any facility though probably when you use the emergency number you call in you take you tell us and they will ask you are you breathless are you having any very severe symptoms if none okay so you stay in your house depending on whatever um, parameters that they are using. Are these numbers also captured as part of positive cases? It will be difficult. So if we are, we are being restricted to the cases that are reported to the hospital that are very severe cases that are kept in the whole bay or in the treatment centers, definitely our, our case count will continue to go down. I still can't objectively say that the number of cases is either going up or going down because of the a shift in the are we still recording the best person to really get are the district health directorates um, of the Ghana Health Service to give us that information whether we are indeed recording all those cases the clinical definition if someone phones in and gives you his symptoms and you is deemed mild is this still recorded as okay we have recorded one case is, is that is that still being done that's a bit difficult to say mm. tell me tell me in general terms what you and your members mm -hmm. believe uh, when it comes to how well Ghana is doing in managing uh, COVID-19. The numbers are telling a better story than before, but what do you and your members believe is the reality? 
Okay, so we started. We started from as you said, one case, and now we are at almost forty-three thousand um, cases, of which a, um, a substantial number have recovered. We started with a spread calm, not fear. I don't know, but I tend to believe that that message went down too well with the general Ghanaian population. There was nothing to fear. It is good in managing pandemics, but that should go hand in hand with the things that people are to do, the protocol that they are supposed to observe to break the tide of the pandemic. But you could tell that the message of spread calm is nothing to be um, scared about. Those who were um, succumbing to the disease had serious comorbidities. That was the message that was being preached from day one. So a lot of people tend to, well, we are young, we are strong. Um, when you are taking some herbal concoctions or something, you, you won't succumb to this disease. So that has gradually eating down to our subconscious and now people can boldly step out of their houses, go out on the street with no fear that even they can't get the disease because they are young and they have all this supposed immunity to this, um, to this virus. But that has been the general trend. So we, we are still on a high state of threat in our hospitals. That I can say for our members because we know it's still true, it's still out there because we still see the severe cases as they come to the hospital. Um, breathless, needing oxygen, already struggling with other um, people with other conditions for the same mega resources. So we believe it's still out there. We know it's still out there. and. As doctors, as health professionals, we still need to be on a high state of alert because it's not it's not over. Right. Uh, there is a lot of concern about the failure um, of members of the public to adhere to the protocols. Mask wearing seems mm -hmm. to be on the decline. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. What would what would you want to say to to members of the public about this? How important is it that we all uh, stick to these protocols? Yes, and um, principally with mask wearing, it's, it helps very, very much. Because when you have a mask, you are restricting the volume of droplets that you're expelling into the general air for if that's everyone is taking in. So one, you are protecting the general public and you're also protecting yourself. You're also limiting the particles that you are inhaling. You know, sometimes with, with them, aside COVID, a lot of um, respiratory some droplets are in the air that may also result in respiratory um, inflammation of sorts. It's general. So mask wearing is the easiest thing that you can do. Now, when we started um, at the peak of the pandemic, you could tell that the recorded numbers, you could tell that the cost of these face masks were, was, was astronomical. But gradually, because of the market forces, it's, it's really come down and we are all being encouraged to buy or use um, cloth masks. So really, you don't have an excuse, except you just don't want to observe the protocols. And now, previously to before you enter some of the big shops, um, you go out there, there's a Veronica bucket that you are supposed to wash your hands. They will take, check your temperature before you go. But it seems that everybody is relaxing. I don't know whether people have gotten comfortable with the idea that because they say this is the new normal, so they are just relaxed about everything. But I want to encourage the general public, let's still use the face mask. So as soon as you are stepping out of your house, in your own house, you it's a controlled environment. If Even if someone has been tested positive, you can isolate, you know the danger. Once you are stepping out, you are not sure of what is out there. You are not sure of the, the status of the next person. And really, it's not just uh, the elderly or those with comorbidities. We've had younger people, 30s, 20s, 40s, who are also coming in with severe disease. Uh, we always say that um, the COVID-19, the virus, is an evolving one. We are still learning. So they, we don't really know what makes it tick like have severe, take a severe course in some individuals or even in some countries. You all know what happened in the United States and some parts of Europe, how, and Italy, how 
the the virus took a very very the pandemic took a very very severe course and why we in Ghana we are having just a mild course but we don't want to get there we don't want to use ourselves as guinea pigs to find out because we know how fragile our health support systems are right Dr. Bernard Hammond, President of the uh, um, Ghana Association of Doctors in Residence, GADO. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it ever so much. Now, let's see if we can figure out why it appears that the protocols are being adhered to less and less by members of the public. We went out in the street to ask you. Using it. It's not that I do not have it. I have my own, but sometimes I remove it to receive fresh air because no... In the, sometimes our weather here is too hot, it's too harsh. It's, it's, uh, to come see put on a um, nose mask is, is somehow, is, uh, I know it's, uh, even uh, this cholera virus you are talking about, uh, I not even believe in it in Africa here. Yeah, that's the truth. Uh, that's the number one truth. Is, uh, means, uh, I don't believe um, it. If some people believe on it, um, that one concerns them. But me, for me, I don't believe in the cholera virus because that one will not affect me. If I wear nose mask or not wear nose mask, Cholera virus will never reach my side. If somebody is coming, I don't know the person. He have sick on her or him. That's why I'm doing this. So I'm taking myself. I have breathing difficulties while carrying the bread and wearing the mask at the same time. That's why I don't wear it at all. I want to have some fresh air. That's why I've not been wearing the mask. Yeah. I don't have any reason for not wearing it. I don't believe that COVID-19 is real. It's only God who can protect us, and not the sickness. It's only God who can protect us. I don't believe in the nose mask or even the sickness. 